Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in Santa Clara, California at the MIT Chief Data Officer second annual West Coast Edition. We cover the East Coast Edition back in, in Cambridge. We wanted to come out to the West Coast Edition and see what's going on. And we watched a great movie about uh, the human face of big data, terrific panel discussion. They got a full day program tomorrow. So we were able to grab a few minutes with some of the esteemed guests. And we're excited uh, for this segment to be joined by Gardner analyst, uh, Joe Bogaisky. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much, appreciate it, the opportunity. Absolutely, so uh, interesting times, and I think you, you brought up a really interesting point. You know, the movie made everything look like it's happening now as beautiful graphs and visualizations, and we're saving lives and, and, and making things great, but really, it's still early days. Oh, it's very early days, but the good news is that there's a lot that can be done, and I think that came across loud and clear in, in, in the film. What, what we don't see is just how much more can be done. They talk about it in there, which is great because there is just enormous opportunity ahead of us beyond, actually beyond anything we've seen so far in the in, in the internet revolution. Yeah, I always go back to Amara's Law, which you know we're right down the street from from uh, Intel and RMB and Gordon Moore, and we're sitting in an Intel office, and everyone knows Moore's, Moore's Law, but Amara's Law just doesn't get the cred that it gets. You know, we totally overestimate in the short term, and we way underestimate the long term impacts. And I think this is going to be a classic textbook example if we're going to be in for significant, huge changes. Yeah, I think the changes will not just be in one area either. They won't just be in business. They're going to be in government, in education, and throughout society. There will be good things and there will be bad things because every w major technological revolution, which this one is close to being, but, um, but at this point still being evolutionary, yeah. is preceded by some great ideas, some new things that we're finding to get the excitement going and the investment moving. And when we do that, then we have opportunity to explore and expand the excitement builds it on itself, grows some more. And we're just at the very beginning of that. And it's funny because uh, people are very excited and things are moving in, but the technology is always outpacing kind of the governance, it's outpacing the regulation, it's outpacing the law. And a really good point that you brought up is really the ethics. And, and someone once said that if big data is done well, it's magic, big data done not well is kind of creepy. So talk a little bit about the ethics and some of these ethical dilemmas that we really have to face when we're all carrying these mobile devices, whether we like it or not, everybody knows exactly where we are all the time, how fast we're moving, are we running through stop sites? Are we jogging every day? I mean, everybody knows because it's all in our mobile phone. Right, that's very true. What we what we don't see, though, is how uh, how that data can be used and under what conditions it can be used. And and again, there's a good side and a bad side. And as you said, there's and and the, one of my analysts, Frank Bautendike, started the research at Gartner on this with digital ethics, and that's the, the creepy line. Once you go over that creepy line, all of a sudden you're talking about something that most established organizations would unlikely do. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that there aren't some new explorers out there that take a shot at it and see what happens. Right. And I don't mean nefarious, I don't mean that, but things that some people might find slightly distasteful, or even a lot distasteful. And other people will find this is exciting. <laughs> and out of that comes new ideas. And so what should be, where should those boundaries be drawn? That has to be done as a society, that has to be done as a culture, that has to be done in our, in our businesses, in our homes. We have to make those decisions. We have to set the parental controls, if you will. That's the chief, what's one of the chief data officer's primary missions, is to understand what that data does, what it can do, and how it can contribute to both the well-being but also the harm of the organization. Now, just give, give an example. There was one that we, that, uh, we investigated that uh, Amazon has been gracious enough to allow us to talk about, and that's that's where uh, search, searches are be were being done to look for different kinds of paraphernalia that that um, actually could be used to build methane meth, right? So if you want to build a meth lab, you could be looking for the same kinds of things. That was certainly not their intent. However, you know, word gets out that oh my goodness, look at what's going on. Where does that line get drawn? I have no idea. And it's very, very difficult because that's an individual use situation. Now, if they detect it, they stop it. If, but that doesn't mean the algorithm's in, inherently evil. It's how we use it, how we choose to understand the information, how we choose to govern ourselves and to, and to both limit and explore. 
And it's interesting on the algorithm side because people write algorithms, but you don't necessarily know what the output of that algorithm is going to be, and that's a perfect case. You're trying to put together a bucket of goods that you see is often purchased together, and maybe you make suggestions. If you buy one, you probably need these other three things, and maybe I'll even give you a deal if you buy them all today. But but that algorithm wasn't built to help people build meth labs. So even if even if you thought that maybe you're trying to be proactively conscious of the algorithms that you're building, you just can't know all the all the answers or where it's going to go. No, you can't. But what you can do is react to it to understand what happens. And then, yes, you'll have to put some governors on some of these things and say, well, this is not the kind of business we're in. So we're not going to do that. And so those, but we will understand that only when it's brought to our attention. This is where sharing, the information sharing economy com comes in and helps us. So just the opposite is true, right? That, the that these things happen allow us to see that they're happening and allow us to make a d good decision. But we won't know to make the decision if, if it never comes forward. Right. If we quiesce it, if we try to hide it, if we, if we bury it under a rug, it just isn't the right thing to do. We have to debate in open society, in open forums, we have to debate like this at, yeah. at uh, the CDO forum. And it was interesting in the movie, they had a great example of, of really metadata and, and you know, really analyzing the searches. And it was a CDC example of using, um, searching on Google searches for flu symptoms and flu searches to be able to predict where flus were going before the CDC would actually get data from doctors and be two weeks ahead of the game. But there's two other levels of ethics. So even if we kind of taken the Amazon example a little further, we decide, you know, we do the algorithm, we make the adjustment, then, but then there's the government that potentially, with or without permission, is grabbing that data that maybe we never really thought about, or you know, a third-party hacker that jumps in, and you know, we hear hacking attacks all the time. That again, we never necessarily plan for that data to go in those hands. But those are kind of two other levels of people getting access to that data that was never necessarily intended. But let's face it, the data is there, and it almost feels like you should almost plan for an attack, uh, and more kind of how do you respond and how do you, you know, how do, how do you clean up the mess rather than really think that you can ultimately build a castle around this stuff. Oh, very true. You're not going to build a castle around around your data. However, we also should separate out things that where we're under attack, where there are truly not just unethical, immoral, and illegal activities happening. That kind of an attack we need to protect against. And we need to do things with the algorithms that we, we know how to build to detect the onset of such a thing and prevent it. It was you know, not that long ago when a DNS attack, a denial of service attack, would, would be a problem for organizations. Most organizations can now stop it. They've got the tools, the technologies, the infrastructure to do it. But what they don't have the infrastructure, tools, and technology to do, and one of the things that, that t was an insight to me as I watched the movie, was they only don't have the inf we don't know how to detect behavior <clears throat> that's spoofed. So imagine, if you will, once we learn how, behavior, how typical behavior is, we can spoof that behavior. I've seen that in my career before when we're doing analysis of data. We've seen, I've seen spoofing attacks that are so close to real behavior of good people that they're very, very difficult to, those are gonna be the challenges that the current generation has to get our, get our minds wrapped around and try to, try to address because we must, we must protect ourselves from those attacks. There are nefarious souls out there. They will, they will try to attack us. They will try to take things from us that don't belong to them and use it for ill-gotten gain. Whatever their purpose or methodology is really doesn't matter. What we have to do is protect ourselves. When we talk about ethics, remember, we're talking about you know, the decisions we make about something that is on that border of, you know, is this right for our business? Is this right for our government? Is this right for our, for our, our citizens? We need to make those decisions as informed, as informed citizens. We need to make those decisions as informed executives. And do the best we can, right, with the information that we have. And nobody's perfect. No amount of information is complete. So we just got to do what we got to do. And we'll neither anticipate all the possible outcomes like we talked about one. You know, completely reasonable behaviors on, and, uh, on the part of the algorithm and the people using it, et cetera. And then, you know, somebody uses it for ill-gotten gain. 
that's, you know, we have to understand it, we have to make a decision what we do about it, and we have to share that, if that those insights. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Joe, very much for spending a few minutes. I know you got a busy day ahead tomorrow, and uh, it's been a long day today. So thanks for stopping by. You're quite welcome. Thank you so much for the. I'm Jeff Frick with the Cube. We are at the MIT Chief Data Officer Summit, the second one on the West Coast. You're watching the Cube. Thanks for watching.